Good evening and welcome to another installment. Here it is, the midweek, and we're continuing our series on the on the topic of forgiveness. And tonight we're looking at forgiveness and its placement in in the procedure, if you will, of salvation, uh, how we become a Christian. And we're in the book of Acts. Now, I want to give a step back and, and uh, develop a scene so that we really get a picture of what's going on. Um, there had been the Old Testament, and it was the story of the Hebrew people, the Jews, and then there was silence of maybe 400 years, and then there was John the Baptist. Now, John the Baptist, it, things really pivot uh, theologically on him. Uh, the message he brought was a baptism of repentance, not one of man's works. And so this was a new theological introduction, if you will. And then there was Jesus, and Jesus uh, spent his years, uh, developed that tension, developed the, uh, uh, his story, and then he died for the sins of man, and then he resurrected, and then he ascended and went to heaven. Now, during his time, like for instance in John 14, 15, and 16, he said, I'm going to send my spirit. Now, he said, I'm, I'm going to send my spirit, the comforter, he's going to teach you, he's going to convict you. And then after Jesus, there was this brief period of time, and then the Holy Spirit came. Now, at the time that the Holy Spirit came, there was a celebration uh, of Pentecost. And the disciples were there in this room, Peter was there, and the Holy Spirit fell. And you can read about this in, in Acts chapter 2. I, I really strongly encourage you to read all of Acts chapter 2. It's, uh, it's an exciting passage of Scripture. And there's a lot in there. I'm not going to unpackage that. We're looking specifically at verse 38. Um, and, and verse 38, um, before I read that, I, I want to continue this buildup. So the Holy Spirit fell on the disciples and they started speaking in other languages. Now, get a picture of this. It was Pentecost, and Jews were coming from all over Asia uh, and, and, and all around the Mediterranean, wherever there were Jews. They, they, many would come and celebrate Pentecost. Now, here they are from other countries, say Italy, Spain, uh, throughout Asia, and, and they have their own native tongues, Greeks, Italians, you know, Spanish, wherever, whatever tongue they were speaking, all of a sudden they started hearing these disciples speaking their language. And it was odd because these were just common people. And here they are speaking in these other languages. And, and so it drew the attention, a crowd gathers, and they're, they're thinking that the disciples are drunk. And Peter stands up with the eleven and he says, Men of Israel, what you're thinking is not what, that's not what's going on. And then he gives an overview, and this is why it's important for us to read all of chapter 2. He gives an incredible uh, overview of what has just taken place in Palestine that Jesus had come, he was the Messiah, and, and Peter says, you people put him to death. And, and, and the Spirit is convicting them, and now they're standing there on, on flat-footed, if you will. And they say to him these very words. They said, he says, they said to him, what, what, and you can feel the desperation. They said, well, what should we do? And Peter then answers in verse 38. Before I read it, I want to pray though, okay? Father, we ask that you would teach us your word, that we would understand your word, that you would speak your word into our hearts, our lives. Father, that we would get it, that we would receive it, and that we would act on it. Teach us now in Jesus' name, amen. So now here we've got uh, Acts 
Chapter 2, verse 38, and I'm going to read this. It says, Peter said to them, Repent, and each of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. For, here's the reason, for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. There is so much in this. Gift. What do you mean gift? Uh, the Jews had been, had been teaching them that you work for your salvation. There's all these rules and laws and you're supposed to do this and that. And, and, and no, the gift of the Holy Spirit came from receiving the free gift of Jesus Christ and the work that he did on the cross. And, and so now I'm backing up. He says baptized because this was this literally when you became a Jew if you were like like let's say you were from India and the Jewish thing made sense to you you would be re, you would be baptized into Judaism Peter is saying you're going to be baptized like John into repentance that is turning from your sin towards God. Repent. Have a change of mind. That's what it literally means. A change of mind so that you are no longer thinking of self and selfish pursuits, but that you're now thinking in a way that is consistent that God thinks through his word, what his word teaches, the principles, the standards, the message, the person, the personality. Uh, this is what we receive, and this is how we start to think like. We no longer think the ways of the world because we've been literally transferred from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. And so metanoia, the Greek word there for repent, means that we turn and, and our, we have a new mind. We have a new mindset. We have a new direction for our mind. Now he is saying repent. So he says to them repent. They understand what that means. A complete a mind change of direction. He says be baptized. And then he says it's for the forgiveness of sins. In other words, there is a debt that is between you and God, and that debt needs to be taken care of by you asking for forgiveness. And now, because Jesus has died for your forgiveness, the, the work can be done. It is finished, Jesus said, on the cross. And so now, you and I, Gentiles, or, or if, you're, if you're not a converted Jew, um, or, or a Muslim, we can now turn to God and ask for forgiveness of sin. This is the good news. This is the good message. And so the teaching here is that because we're in a series of forgiveness, that our place of as non-believers can be replaced and become believers and followers of Jesus Christ, disciples. Uh, students of the Lord Jesus Christ and the Word of God. And, and, and so forgiveness fits in as the initial part of us becoming in a relationship with God, becoming Christians, Christ-like. And, and why it's important that we see this is that the element is that there has to be a turning to God and a forsaking of sin. There has to be a baptism. He says, repent and be baptism. Uh, be ba repent and be baptized. And so there's a repentance. There is a baptism. And, and it's, it's through the element of forgiveness, seeking for forgiveness. If you don't ask for forgiveness of sins, you still have the sins. Okay, it's that simple. And, and then we ask for and receive the Holy Spirit. And, and so when we continue on our study of, of, um, of the, the subject of forgiveness, it's important that we understand that spiritual things are understood spiritually. In, uh, in another word, spiritual things are discerned spiritually. We understand them, we perceive them spiritually because we've received the Holy Spirit and the Spirit of God unites with our spirit in us. And now we're able to understand because God is able to teach us and, and we're able to receive. Now, the Holy Spirit equips us to understand the teaching 
of forgiveness. We'll never be able to go out and, un and forgive those who have, who have hurt us and who have done damage to us uh, from the extreme to the simple, uh, from you know, misunderstanding a simple unmisspoken word to possibly, uh, you know, as, as not possibly, but as, as, as extreme as being raped or, or, or people doing physical harm to you. We, all things are forgivable when we understand forgiveness. And we'll never understand forgiveness unless we have been forgiven for our sins and we've received the Holy Spirit. I hope that makes sense to you. If, if you're confused in any of these things, you go ahead and write an email to me, markestanford at gmail.com. I'd, I'd, I'd be happy to answer your questions and if, if you're confused on these things. And it, 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 ultimately, you want to ask for understanding through the Holy Spirit. Asking, I don't know how many times in my uh, what, 40 years of being a Christian, how many times I've asked God, I, look, I don't understand this bit about your word. And he always teaches me, always teaches me. He has always made himself known to me. He will do that to you if you ask. He will make himself known. He'll make his word known. If you're in that situation, by all means, please seek him out. Ask him. Ask him, ask for forgiveness of sins, and, and seek out a Bible-believing church, be baptized, and, and continue to grow in the truths of the Word of God. Uh, ask for the Holy Spirit. Forgiveness is that pivotal part, that, that essential part to understanding what forgiveness is and what the Scriptures teach. Let's pray. Father, we need you. Teach us. Help us to understand your word. Your word is truth. God, you've, you've worked such an amazing change in my life. And, and you've brought me from that, that rotten person, that evil person, to this person who adores you, loves you, and serves others. Lord, if there's someone out there that doesn't know you, would you draw them to you? And would you teach them these things? Father, we need you. We bless you. Now would you bless us, bless us indeed. Would you expand our territory? May your hand be with us. Keep us from evil. Blessed be your name. Amen. God bless you.